to all those who devoted their lives to aviation. The Wings of Russia Studio presents Wings of Russia documentary. The first experimental assault force was created in March 1931 in the Leningrad military district. It comprised 12 TB-1 bombers and 10 P-5 support aircraft. Initially, TB-1 was designed by the Tupolev Design Bureau as a bomber. By mid-50s, USSR was way far behind USA in the sphere of transport aviation. Besides, primitive navigating equipment of the Soviet transport aircraft limited their usage a lot. It was impossible, for example, to drop paratroopers at night and in bad weather due to absence of the plane-to-plane -plane communication, or it was impossible to fly in a close formation to make a compact assault landing. Until certain time, attempts were made to improve efficiency of the military transport aviation by means of its reorganization, but that did not bring much change. Principal changes occurred in 1955 when the Military Transport Aviation, or MTA, obtained the status of a separate branch of the Air Force. Marshal Nikolai Skripko assisted the MTA establishment a lot. He became commander of the Assault Transport Aviation in 1950 and served in that position for 19 years. In the same 1950, requirements to the specialized transport aircraft were formulated. Takeoff and landing were supposed to be arranged from sand as well as from limited strips, and flights were supposed to be performed in difficult weather conditions day and night. The aircraft was supposed to have a spacious cargo cabin, a range, a white hatch in the rear, and a loading ramp. High wing became a characteristic feature of a transport aircraft. Such aircraft started to enter service from 1958. It was a turboprop AN-8 designed by Alek Antonov's design bureau. Its load lifting capacity amounted to 11 tons, which was three times more than of its predecessors. It could carry and parachute large military technique and cargoes. It had heavy-duty landing gear to operate from sand and snow-covered aerodromes. This aircraft did not stay long in production. The range of the MTA service in the interest of different types of forces was growing continuously and an aircraft with much higher payload was already required. Moreover, missile forces were developing fast and they were usually deployed in places to which one can get only by air. So right after AN-8, there appeared AN-12, with twice bigger payload and an expanded flight range. Unlike its predecessor, it had four instead of two turboprop engines. In December 1957, AN-12 made its first flight. Just like AN-8, the prototype was piloted by test pilot Yakov Vernikov. AN-12 appeared to be easy and unpretentious. As to the number of copies produced and the amount of modifications, this machine has no match among the Soviet transport aircraft. Large cargo cabin allowed to carry an entire variety of the military assault equipment, as well as items of other types of armed forces, with a mass of up to 20 tons. 
landing capabilities grew significantly with the appearance of the multi-sphere parachute systems. For a long time, AN-12 remained the main Soviet transport aircraft performing various tasks from aerospace equipment tests to scientific research in polar latitudes. A unique 26,000 kilometer long flight from Moscow to Antarctic was performed in 1961. 